Hi, my name is Josh. And I'm Charity, and this is our story. So in 2020, we started discussing just the possibility of foster care in our lives and what that might look like, um, foster care and adoption or just foster care. And then right as we kind of started looking into it more seriously, COVID happened. And so that kind of just derailed everything. You know, things were shutting down um, for everybody else, but for Josh being a FedEx delivery driver at that point, life was so busy. And so we just kind of put those plans on hold and said, you know, maybe we'll pick this up when life slows down a little bit. And, you know, it wasn't something that we had really set a definitive timeline on. It was just something we were interested in looking at. And we hadn't really discussed, you know, when we wanted to have biological kids versus when we didn't. Um, it was just, hey, we know we're interested in adoption and right now we're young. And so we know we have the energy to be able to pursue this. And if, if you know, we get pregnant and have a kid while this is going on, great. If we don't, we don't. It wasn't something that we just were like super set in stone about. And then in August, I actually did end up becoming pregnant. Um, but unfortunately that pregnancy ended in miscarriage. And so, we just took a little bit of time to grieve and to process everything we'd been through. You know, we were saying, hey, we want to adopt, we want to do foster care. Oh, wait, I'm pregnant. Oh, wait, I'm not. And um, so after a few months of that, um, just processing and thinking through what our lives were, were looking like at that time, we kind of just couldn't get rid of that thought of adoption. Um, it just kept pushing at us and pushing at us and we would hear this adoption story or we'd see this couple who is adopting or we would you know read this book and this thing was just it was just constantly being presented to us adopt 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 orphan care is important god loves orphans and so we just started talking about it again and gradually kind of came to the same conclusion that you know, biological kids weren't off the table by any means, but at this point in time, with the trauma of the miscarriage um, still really bothering me, um, we both felt that pursuing adoption as the first introduction to having kids was really a better option for us. So in January of 2021, we uh, reached out to Lifeline Children's Services, and that was our first contact with them where we started to um, started to get the ball rolling on our adoption process. And so we were talking to just the people over with Lifeline and they said, you know, the Bulgaria program is really, really solid. We love the people that are over there um, and all that they do to advocate for the kids that are over there. And they really specify advocating for kids with special needs. And so we kind of talked about it and came back to them and said, you know, um, we don't we don't have a problem with pursuing special needs and in fact we're both really interested in pursuing um, maybe a child that has like down syndrome or something similar and the lady just laughed over the phone and she goes that's such a god thing because bulgaria actually has a lot of kids with down syndrome that need adopted and they have a track that you can do specifically to pursue a child with down syndrome then in January of 2023, we got an email that we got matched with Matthew. Was it in February? It was in February. Uh, and uh, when we got matched with Matthew, we were just overjoyed. He was, uh, we, we got some pictures of him and he was the cutest kid we've ever seen in our lives. Um, and he was super happy in all these pictures and we just fell in love with him right away. Um, before we received our match with him, you know, we had emailed our caseworker a couple of times just asking, hey, this, this wait is longer than what seems traditional. And she emailed back saying, I think that there's a reason they're having you wait and I think this is what it is. And so knowing as soon as he was up for international adoption, I think they pulled our file and submitted it um, to FNA, the adoption agency in Bulgaria, saying, hey, I think this is the child that we need to match with this family. And um, to know we had waited all this time specifically because they were looking at us to be matched with this little boy. Um, and then just the bittersweet acknowledgement of the timeline of our miscarriage. Um, if we had carried to full term, 
those twins that we had miscarried would actually be born within just Weeks. days of days. Matthew's birthday at the exact same year. Um, so to know, you know, maybe there should be three. Sometimes is really hard. But at the same time, if we had had those two, we wouldn't have Matthew. And we love him so much. later, we ended up flying out to Bulgaria for our very first trip out to, out to see Matthew. They do two trips for this adoption process because the people over there feel it's really important to meet the child before you consent to adopt them. So we were able to go and spend a week over there getting to know the culture, getting to know the caseworkers over there, and then also spending time getting to know Matthew. and. Um, we walked into, you know, their, their little playroom that they had set aside for us for our first meeting and his foster mom had him on the ground playing and we opened up the door and she was smiling and waving at us and he just toddled right over and sat right in my arms and then went right over to Josh and was so friendly and affectionate with us. Um, for once my beard didn't scare a kid off. <laughs> So after that trip was over, we came back home. It was a whirlwind of paperwork for like... Two weeks. Two weeks of, you have to get this done, you have to get this done. It's a really time sensitive thing. And so we thought that, oh, maybe we'll actually be going over like really soon. And then we sat and we waited and waited and waited for them to call us and say, hey, you can go over now. A lot of the difficulty for us didn't, uh start to arise until we were matched with Matthew, everything became a lot more personal. We knew who our son was. We knew that we were waiting for a specific person. We'd met him, we'd held him and loved him. And we were celebrating with our family and we were just talking about, you know, what we were looking at doing with him in the future. And the weight of it just was crushing me. And I had to like leave and go and sit in the car because I just could not stop weeping. Um, knowing like, we just, we don't know when we're gonna receive this call. Like it could be months from now and it, it was months from now. And I was like, I just miss him. I know I only met him like four times, but I miss him. I want him to be with us. What should have been a 10 to 12 month journey ended up being over two and a half years of, of waiting to go get Matthew. So toward the end of the summer, we, we got a, an email and they wanted to schedule a phone call. We, we sat down and talked with our agents or with our social worker and uh, then bought tickets, bought hotel rooms, and flew out to Bulgaria for two weeks in September. in September. We landed in Sofia and we had about a day to overcome our jet lag and then we hopped into a car and drove five hours northeast to the city of Rousse and spent the night in a hotel there. And then the very next morning, right off the bat, we drove to his apartment and were greeted into his home, welcomed by his foster mom. She saw us and just, immediately started crying. Um, she was so happy and obviously sad that we were there. Um, and we just, we walked into that room and they were like videoing him, walking over to us. You could tell he recognized us. They'd spent hours and hours showing him pictures of us and talking to him about who we were. And Every single day, his foster mom would open up a little photo album with some pictures that were taken of us all together on our first trip. And she didn't speak much English at all, but she would point at me and say, Daddy, and point at Charity and say, Mommy, and go through those pictures every single day from March until we picked him up. Yeah. Um, so at her house, we just had a little party. We ate some cake. We gave her a shirt that matched ours that said Adoption Day with his name on it. 
and that was a really special moment to be able to have all of us wearing these shirts and taking these pictures. And then they took some pictures of us loading up in the car and we left. We were only there for about 45 minutes. And so very quickly he just adjusted to being a part of our family. And it still felt a little strange kind of through the whole trip, like we were just maybe like babysitters for him. Um, but for Matthew, you could tell he knew really fast, okay, this is mommy, this is daddy, these are now the people that love me and that take care of me, these are my family. The next morning, we woke up at 3 a.m. and got him ready. Uh, 30 minutes later, we were in a car headed to the airport. And if you've ever flown with a kid, you probably know the anxiety that we had going, going into it. Um, we were... Uh, we were really fearful that his ears would hurt from the pressure, that he wouldn't want to eat or drink anything, that he would cry the whole time. Um, but Matthew was a champ. The whole he time. He slept pretty much every hour of being up in the air flying, he was asleep. And so we finally landed in the Denver airport and we walked up to the line and Josh took out that manila envelope and handed it to the worker that was there. And the guy looked at it and said, oh, are you guys adopting? And we said, yep. And he said, well, and he ripped it open and he goes, now your kid's an American citizen. And we were able to just, he stamped his visa and he stamped his passport and we were able to just walk right through that line and head back into the airport and get ready to take on the last leg of our trip. Then we hopped on a plane from Denver to Des Moines, got off the plane, walked through the airport, and were greeted by tons of friends and family from church and a home and all, all, sorts, of, all sorts of people that uh, we know and love that came to welcome Matthew home. And uh, that was just such a, a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful night. Yeah, it was like 11.30 and obviously we were exhausted, but Matthew, who had slept amazing, was happy and awake and wanted everybody to hug him. And we were there celebrating with our, fan, our friends and family for so long that actually they like paged us over the airport and common were like, Joshua and Charity Smith, please come and get your luggage. <laughs> <laughs> and so then we had to like break it up and go and get all of our stuff, but. There was a lot of luggage. <laughs> It was a really special time to be able to celebrate our homecoming with our friends and family. And we were all wearing that same shirt again, just signifying, this is our son, he's a Smith now. He's in our family. Just like God has brought us into his, Matthew has now been brought into ours.